Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Big Vale, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to three star with Sui Lalo. Now, as we always do in these guide videos, I'm going to be talking you through the theory behind it and how we broke down this base, and ultimately what you're looking for when building a Sui Lalo plan of your own. Okay, so what have we got here? We've got a, uh, I suppose, an anti three base. So we've got the town hall in its own compartment up here. Town Hall, definitely a key structure, as it is always. We've got a scatter shot here. Scatter shots, absolutely nasty. They are beastly when it comes to uh, targeting balloons. You want to stay away from those bad boys. We've got multi infernos. Okay, pretty nasty, pretty nasty. We've got no heal spells in this comp. I don't carry a heal in my Suilalo. You can if you want to, but I prefer not to. And you've got the Clan Castle. Goes without saying, self-explanatory, isn't it? Ideally with the clan castle, by the way, you want to be taking the CC troops out before you're deploying your Lalo. The last thing you want to do is risk it and end up having something that's nasty to Lalo coming out of there, like a double dragon, super minions, whatever. You want to try and take care of that, nip it in the bud really early on. And the final thing to look out for, kind of obvious, but you've got sweepers. So we've got one there and one there. They're your main defences that are a threat when it comes to uh, Sui Lalo. Notice how I haven't included air defences in that. And you're probably thinking, Big Vale, you've missed the trick there. But no, I haven't. So we've got air defences over here, 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 and here. Why do I not consider air defences to be a critical defence that we need to worry about? Mainly because air defences are actually there to help us with Alalo, because air defences dictate the pathing of your hound. So if you've got, say, I don't know, that air defence gone and that air defence gone, but your pathing that you're looking to try and follow with your Alalo, as is on this attack, is straight through here, your hounds ain't going to be much use. Once you've taken down this air defence, your hounds are going to then make a beeline for this air defence, where in theory, if that is the path that we're looking for, we've got no balloons that need to go up there because we've already taken it out. So yeah, that, that's the kind of thing we're talking about. You need to focus on the air defences, but not see them as a threat. See them more as something to build pathing and to work your Lalo around. Okay, so with that being said, the idea behind the Sui Lalo is to ultimately take out as much of the base while building pathing, taking out key defenses, including the town hall, preferably in the clan castle, as you can using your king, your queen, your royal champion. You've got skeleton spells in there as well. And you can also, if you need to, utilize your siege machine. So I often do choose to use my siege machine as part of this Sui, just because you can get much more value without, with it than without it. And it's usually a lot more useful having it as part of the Sui than it is, say, sending a stone, a stone slammer in with the Lalo. If you can do a good enough Sui, your Lalo is really easy. So, on this base, what are we going to do? We're going to look to try and take out, as I've said, as much as we can on that side of the base with our Sui, with our Siege Machine. So how do we do that? Sounds ambitious, but it's definitely doable. So we're going to be using our trusty Flame Flinger over here. So Flame Flinger is going to be used to take out essentially as much of that as possible. As much of it as possible. Now we do come across a little obstacle um, and you know, two things to look out for, by the way, with a Flame Flinger. In fact, three things to look out for with a Flame Flinger. You've got uh, Mortar, Expo and any hidden Tesla positions. The Mortar and Expo outrange the Flame Flinger. Hidden Teslas, if one, say, pops up, oh, I don't know, around about here, it actually happens, then, uh, yeah, that can end your Flame Flinger pretty quickly. So they're the three things that can be a threat to the Flinger. Otherwise, it's generally really, really trustworthy. So we're going to take out all of that with the Flinger. That means that we're then going to sui the Town Hall with our King and Queen and our RC. We'll send the RC in as well. So ultimately, we're going to look to try and funnel the king and queen inside here, take out the town hall, try and take out as much of the compartment as possible. Now, we do have a single inferno behind the town hall, so that's an obvious threat to us. It's something that we're not going to easily deal with because we'd have to get through the town hall poison to deal with it. So if it's still standing afterwards, then no big deal. Single infernos, 
big threat to Asui, not such a big threat to Alalo. Okay, so King and Queen are going to move in. We're going to use our Skeleton spells, we've got those, so they're going to be used to tank wherever needed. They're great against things like the Warden, Single Infernos, um, Archer Towers, but pretty much anything that's a point defense, they are really, really good against. Multi Infernos, not so much, but luckily we've got no multis in the entry point here. Okay, so we're going to send the king and queen in. The king actually ends up wandering back out again and walks down here, which actually kind of did as a favor, I suppose. But whatever, I mean, whatever. The king walked out. Ideally, he would have stayed in here with the queen, taken out all of this compartment, probably minus the single. The RC was going to get sent in here to clean up the little bit in between. And then that essentially does leave us with that Lolo path that we talked about through here. So just to, again, recap, Flameflinger takes out all of this. Heroes taking out all of this. And then the Lalo goes straight through here. Now, final thing before we hit play, Lalo deployment. That's something that a lot of people are really nervous about, something that people do struggle a little bit with. And I understand it's not... It's not as simple as a dragon spam, for example, where you just put all your fingers on the screen and press away, just drag them everywhere, just deploy whatever anywhere, and it works. This is different. This is um, not so much precision, but it's nearly precision. Um, the reason why I say it's not total precision is that you don't have to get it pinpoint to the exact tile. You just have to make sure that wherever you're dropping your balloons, you're getting four or five going to each defense. Now you can mix it up depending on what defense you're targeting. The rule that I tend to follow is if it's an arch tower, air defense, mortar, I'll go for sort of four balloons. If it's anything heavier than that, something that can stand up a bit stronger like the cannons, the infernos, the expos, the scatter shots, I'll try and go with five balloons moving in towards it. Um, so that's your deployment and you'll see me doing it. So this probably doesn't make too much sense the way I'm explaining it, but when you see it, it might start to come together for you. Okay, so that's the balloon deployment. Of course, we've got the hounds as well. So you want to send a hound in before you start deploying your balloons, just before. And that hound is going to make a beeline for air defense here. Perfect, perfect. So we've got really early tanking for those balloons. You've got your haste spells as well. So we've got an abundance of them, three hastes. We've got four freezes potentially if we didn't use one on the Sui. So we've got enough spells, and in fact, we've probably got a rage or two as well. We've got enough spells to be able to just use them pretty liberally. So you can probably use a haste spell really early on just to bus, uh, push those balloons in. And from there, guys, it's really just a case of dropping more balloons in as and when you're pushing through the base. So you've got your initial drop, which I don't know. So you've got four balloons here, five balloons here, four, four. So you're looking at what, 12, about... 17, 18, 19 balloons dropped in on the initial entry. That leaves you with probably 10 balloons left to drop for the rest of the base. So the way you're going to de deploy those remaining balloons is again, you're going to use hounds to tank for them. So you're going to drop a hound in as and when you need to. So what you want to do with these hounds, by the way, is make sure that they're actually picking up air targeting defenses. So say we've taken that air defense down. That's the only air defense left. So a hound being dropped here, that'd be ideal because it'll pick up the archer tower. We can drop the hound there and then we can deploy more balloons. And you get the picture guys, you get the picture. So I'm not gonna over explain it. We're gonna press play now and you'll see that balloon deployment. And we'll talk about it as it's actually happening. Okay, so first of all, we are gonna go in with that flame flinger. So the flame flinger comes in from nine o'clock. What I should have done there is sent maybe a test balloon at nine. Not for seeking air mines or anything, because who really cares about them? It's not about that. It's more to look for Teslas on that initial entry point. And if I had, maybe my flame flinger would have lasted longer. And just saying. So you can see we use some balloons to uh, cut out the mortars over at 11 and one, just so that King can move in towards the town hall. So King is going to move in. We're going to drop our Queen to support him very soon as well. 
And the Flamefinger's doing a decent job here. It's taking out these uh, defenses, it's working its way through them. It is moving into range of a mortar, so we do have to uh, make a bit of an emergency play here. So skeleton spell dropped in and a free spell on the mortar. So it does only land one shot on our flinger. Mortars, if they land more than one shot, your flinger's life is going to be cut very, very short. So, so far we're actually looking really good. We've got the CC pull. Weirdly, he's got super wizards in this CC, but it doesn't really matter what was in there. We had the poison down. Queen was sniping away. It would have gone down whatever it was. The king has gone down, but he did enough. The RC is now going to move in and work through the expo. The queen has taken out the town hall, and in fact, she does get through to the single. This is looking real strong right now, guys. We've got the pathing pretty much built here. Pretty much built. The RC still has ability. She's taken out the expo in the nine o'clock compartment, and she'll carry on moving through, getting us a little bit more value. So we've got those balloons dropped in in batches. The first hound is on the air defense and it pops. So we send another hound in. And with that hound, we're going to follow it up with some more balloons shortly. So I should have dropped some more in a lot sooner, actually. My balloon deployment was waste. In fact, that hound was swagged. That hound that went towards the three o'clock was absolutely swagged. And the second one wasn't used pretty well either. Wow, what was I doing with my hounds? What I should have done is dropped my last two balloons at least. I only had two left, so I kind of went a little bit too heavy on the early deployment there. So what I talked about and what I actually did, not exactly the same, but you know, it's similar. You get the idea. We should have held a few balloons back just to drop them in over at sort of five o'clock, then at four o'clock, and then maybe at three. But as it happens, we got through the base anyway. We had a good concentration of balloons going through the initial entry points. Um, our hounds didn't do a great deal, but at least the pups that spawned from them did survive and allow us to have some cleanup. And there we go, we've got ultimately a very overwhelming triple. Now imagine how overwhelming it would have been if it had been even more perfect with my deployment and not neglected to drop any balloons with my last two hounds. It would have been insane. But yeah, you get the idea, guys. So we're going to get into a few more replays. I'm not going to go into this whole walkthrough of them, but we will talk through them as the attacks progress instead. Just so less words, more action, basically. And next up, we have a interesting looking base, but we're going to take it down in a similar fashion. So we're basically looking again to build pathing with our king, our queen, our royal champion, and if necessary, our flame flinger. Okay. So the idea here, I'm going to tell you now, is the flame flinger, the intention of it is to get the town hall down. Now you can see there is a ground expo directly north of that flinger. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have to time my suey perfectly to make sure my king picks up the shots from the, uh, the ground bow. I don't want that locking onto my flinger, otherwise that's not going to get the job done. There we go, king gets dropped in. And the idea here is to try and move that king in towards the ground bow and in towards the scatter shot, essentially taking out those three defenses that we've got over here. Okay, and he's gonna do it. He is gonna do it. So the king moves in, the queen's working away around the outside, the king's tanking one of the bows, the scatter shot unfortunately locks onto the queen. I dropped a skeleton spell there to tank, but honestly, it was not a very good skeleton spell. It didn't really tank for anything. So King gets through those three defenses. The Queen's pushing through and we're going to get the RC to join in too. You notice we use our other skeleton spell to activate the Town Hall. We do actually pull up some Teslas as well. So bonus points there. And the Town Hall is going to get targeted and it will go down. We're getting insane value from our King, Queen and RC here as well. We're actually going to take down all defending heroes on the top side. And now we're starting the lava, so I'm just going to stop it here. You're probably looking at this thinking, Big Veil, you've got two sweepers pointing in the direction that you're starting your lava from. Why? Why are you doing that? Well, the reason that we're doing that, guys, is that you can see that we still have the Town Hall up. The Town Hall's up. It's not been hit by the fling uh, uh, Flinger yet. So if we start a lava from this side, which would be the logical side if the Town Hall was out of the way... We're going to lose some balloons to that Giga Inferno, and we don't want that. So we're going to save it till last, and hopefully by the time the Lolo gets through the base, the Town Hall will be gone. And honestly, we've got enough spells to navigate through those uh, sweepers anyway. So we've got plenty of uh, haste, we've got rages, we've got freeze. We're fine, we're fine. So where we get the CC pull, CC pull came a bit later than I would have liked. 
not gonna lie i would have preferred to take it down earlier before we started the lalo but it's fine we got it anyway we've got the loons pushing through now we do have that middle compartment with the eagle still up luckily partly luckily partly through working that lolo with the uh, sui so starting that lolo while the sui was still in play we have our queen still up so the queen can still get a bit of value for us and of course the balloons are going to make it to the core anyway but the queen manages to stay up for the duration of the attack because we started that lolo next to the queen and took any kind of dps away from it and uh, yeah, there we go. We got the Lalo wrapping around the base. Great deployment of the Lalo. We had a few balloons left over, so we dropped them down for cleanup. And we're even swagging a rage spell here. But uh, yeah, that, that is textbook how to do a Sui Lalo using the Flame Flinger. And trust me, people prior to having the Flame Flinger would have struggled a lot more with Sui Lalo. It was a very scary proposition to learn this attack strategy. With the Flame Flinger, it is infinite times easier i'm not going to say it's an easy strategy so if you start trying to do this and it's not going so well don't feel bad guys it's not the easiest strategy in the world but when you've got it perfected there's nothing more rewarding than crushing a max 14 with a sui lalo and here we have an anti three base so what we're going to do we're going to change it up a little bit here i could have used the flame flinger on it over at nine o'clock and got some pretty good value but i also wanted to show you the more traditional method of using a stone slammer with it instead so what we're going to do we're going to sue the town hall with our king queen and rc now i'm not going to lie i didn't get much value with the rc i probably should have used the rc elsewhere um, maybe working with the lalo maybe coming in from 12 I, I don't know it just didn't get much you're looking at it it's going towards that defending queen it's going to get the bomb tower and then that defending queen's just going to wipe her out so she literally took out one building not worth it absolutely not worth it but the king gets the town hall queen takes out the wizard tower and she will deal with the hound too so we're not looking in a bad position right now but if we did have the rc we'd be able to get a lot more value and if we had the rc we probably wouldn't have struggled at any point in this attack it would have been a walk in the park as it happens we didn't have the rc so therefore we did struggle a little bit later on so we're always moving in we've got that initial deployment we've lost a lot of those balloons on the early part and you're probably wondering why i didn't send the warden in with those initial balloons it's because i wanted to have more balloon up oh, sorry more balloon protection moving through the uh, eagle compartment into that uh, 12 and then onto the nine o'clock compartment i felt like the stone slammer would do a decent enough job of protecting those balloons turns out i was wrong big veil can be wrong sometimes but whatever whatever guys you know the what i'm hoping when i make these mistakes is that you're learning from them and realizing how things shouldn't be done as well as how things should be done so we're losing all of the balloons here, which is uh, kind of a rip. We use our last free spell to try and keep these balloons alive, moving in towards the scatter shot. So as it stands, we've got the queen, scatter shot, archer tower, and builder hook. Queen's just gone down to my owl, thankfully. Scatter shot goes down to a balloon, and all we've got left that can threaten us is an archer tower. And that archer tower. It's going to get overwhelmed here we've got so many pups and minions here so many it's like I, I don't even know i can't even count that high guys must be like a thousand of them there they're going to take out overwhelm the archer tower and job done now it wasn't the most overwhelming lalo and i attribute uh, attribute to that uh, to two things one my poor use of the royal champion rip those minions poor use of the royal champion and probably misjudging how safe those balloons would be on the initial entry points i should have probably used the warden with the starter balloons to keep them moving through the base ideally with alalo you want your starter balloons to actually make it quite far into the base because when you're dropping those uh, supplementary balloons in as the balloons path round, you're looking to try and get them to combine combine together and it's like a i don't know i don't know how to describe it it's like a snowball effect if you like so you've got that initial starter point of balloons you're going to lose a couple along the way but they're going to move through the base and as they're moving through they're picking up more balloons from the outside that are going to move in um sort of close in together and by the end of it you'll end up with this massive unstoppable force of balloons now we didn't have that here of course as i've mentioned because i didn't protect that initial batch of balloons properly 
but we still got through the base and that's how forgiving this attack can be even when you're not doing it perfectly and this is why I, um, when, when you talk about precision attacks this isn't necessarily one of them because you can still be a little bit sloppy and still walk away with a three star as you just saw now of course i had to show you how to take down a box base as well now there is a flame flinger method for doing this but i'm showing you right now how to do it with the uh, traditional method of using the stone slammer and the reason why I'm showing you this is because it's, I, I don't know what's going to happen with the Flame Flinger. I don't know if they're ever going to nerf it because it is kind of OP, let's face it. Hopefully they won't, but if they do, we need to have knowledge to help us get through bases without using it. So uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do here. So King, Queen, RC all suing in together. The Queen was tasked with the Town Hall. King and RC, their job was to pull the CC and to also try and take out some defense. Ideally, the King would have taken out the scatter shot as well and the air defense. Didn't quite happen for us. So we are going to have to improvise a little bit and we're going to have to use the stone slammer to work in towards that scatter shot. So we send a few balloons in first. Scatter shot, a stone slammer, sorry, comes down and that acts as our tank. So like we talked about before, it's like a hybrid between a hound and a balloon. And that pops and the uh, scatter shot goes down. Forgot what it was called. Why am I forgetting the names of things today? We've got the Lolo wrapping around. And what you're going to see here is my Lolo deployment. It's coming in, not continuously, but quite frequently down that sort of four or five o'clock side. And the reason we're doing that is we want to take out these defenses on the fringes to drive our balloons in towards that core where we've got the Eagle and the Multi. If we didn't start deploying uh, our balloons around the outside, rather than having that path and leading the balloons in here, we'd have had the balloons working around the outside here and completely ignoring the Eagle artillery. So by deploying balloons working through here, we managed to mitigate that and force those uh, balloons into the core, which is where the real danger was for us. Those core multis, absolute nightmare for Sui Lalo, for any kind of Lalo in fact. So we got the balloons pushing through the base. We've got headhunters moving in behind the Royal Champion. Royal Champion goes down and you can see already guys, we've crushed the base here. That is wiped. It's only a matter of time at this point. We've got plenty of balloons still up. We do have some defenses remaining, but only the single and the builder hook can target these balloons. And yeah, I mean, it's done guys. Basically it's a three star. There's no other way about it. So we do have 30 seconds on cleanup. because a lot of my cleanup troops did die earlier on. So we only have what a few minions, a few pups left over. Not perfect, but we do have that big army of balloons that's coming in to try and save the day. Unfortunately, by the time they actually get there, the job will pretty much be done, but at least they're trying. At least they're trying to help. But yeah, that was relatively overwhelming. We've got uh, plenty of balloons left. We've got a cleanup. Now it's combined together and now it's in a massive force. And uh, yeah, that's pretty straightforward, to be honest. And in a really simple step-by-step -step format, take out the town hall compartment with the queen, Use the King and the RC to cut off one of the corners and try and get a sweeper and a scatter shot down if you can. And then just lolo your way through. Follow that path through the base and uh, yeah, just use spells as and when. I, I mean, I can't really explain it any better than that without going into the, uh, the whole detailed explanation that we had right at the start of the video. So hopefully all of that makes sense to you. Now it wouldn't be a big bail video without an attack on Putty, so here we go. This is Putty's own legendary box base, so what we're going to do, we're going to go back to using the flinger again, and we're going to use that flinger as a town hall takedown device. So it's going to mean that we don't need to invest our queen into the town hall, and the queen can be used elsewhere to get even more value on the funnel. So we've got King, Queen and RC working together, and we're going to get really strong value here. So defending queens down air defense down the king's going to move in and take out the ground but uh, sorry the air bow freeze up the single mainly because i wanted to keep that king alive a little bit longer and that would have been easy activation of the town hall so there we go town hall's active flame fling is going to get the job done it would have probably activated anyway actually from the residual damage from the uh single inferno but whatever it's fine and yeah we've got the queen rocking on through she still has her ability so still a little bit more life in the uh in the lady there takes out the headhunters and now the hound can be dealt with at her leisure poison goes down and yeah we're looking really strong guys so if we look at the overall view here that we've got 
So we're gonna leak to bring the Lalo around here. So we're looking to get it. Basically, that's the path we're looking for. And that kind of path for the Lalo is pretty sweet. Now I kind of screwed up here. I accidentally sent all three hounds in together. I thought I'd switched over to balloons. So I only meant to send one hound initially. And uh, yeah, I kind of screwed up, but it, it's fine. We get through it. So the hounds are getting popped. We've lost all of our hounds, I believe, here. Yeah, there's no hounds still up, but the balloons are in a massive pack right now. Not much defensively that can stop them. We've got that rage, and that rage is over the Royal Champion, and we've got a headhunter that makes it through to her. And with four, five shots onto the RC, the headhunter kills her. We've got plenty of balloons left, not much defensively. We've got plenty of cleanup still to drop in, and our flame flinger still hasn't popped yet. That's how quick this attack was. We almost got to the end of it without the flame flinger even deploying the troops that were in it. And there we go, base crushed. So again, the formula, take down that town hall with the Sui or the Siege, Sui out as much value as you can while keeping an eye on pulling the CC and trying to take out some high value defenses, whether it be heroes, whether it be scatter shots, whether it be uh, multi infernos, just get as much as you can taken care of with a view to building a really nice Lalo path. And that is the result you'll end up with. And just to finish off the video, I'm gonna show you a legend here using this very army. So, of course, we're gonna use the Flame Flinger. Again, I'm not gonna lie, that is my favorite way of doing it. I know I've talked about the Stone Slammer being the traditional way, but the Flame Flinger is just too irresistible. You're probably looking at this thinking, oh, we've got a core cool town hall here. BB, how are you gonna get that town hall down? It's a good question. It's a good question. But that's where having a really effective Sui comes into its own. So the Flame Fling is doing a fantastic job at 9. We've dropped it in such a place that it's not really going to be threatened by any defences. We do have a Mortar that can lock on, actually. Do I deal with it? Do I handle that Mortar correctly? Or do I take damage on the Flinger? We'll find out soon. King and Queen moving in at 11 o'clock. So King getting a ton of value. Queen is going to move in towards that defending RC where we've got the multi-inferno as well. RC joining in too. And you'll notice I dropped both skeleton spells right next to that defending RC. It's because I didn't want to take any damage on my Queen. Yeah, Flame Fling has taken shots and I did not protect it. That was silly of me. Not going to lie. That was kind of silly. But then again, what could I have done? I could have sent a few balloons in. But uh, the Flame Fling has already done its job. I'm not that worried about it. Okay, so RC still has ability, Queen still has ability, the Town Hall is active, and my plan here was to get the Lalo working through, so we're going to drop it in, and we're going to get it to work its way around the Town Hall compartment. And in doing that, I was hoping to get the Queen to just drive straight in through here, shoot away through the wall and take that Town Hall down. She gave me a minor heart attack here, I'm not going to lie guys, because she started shooting at a wall that was not going to benefit me in any way. So fortunately the pups did manage to get some cleanup done. The balloons have done a lot of work here, taking out all of the key defenses on the south side. And soon the queen is going to redirect. She will redirect and she will go towards that town hall. Now, if I had a freeze left over, I wouldn't have even, even needed the queen for that town hall takedown. Sadly, I did not. So I couldn't freeze up that town hall Giga Inferno. It did take out all of my balloons. So we are finishing this attack with no balloons, but whatever. Queen's gonna get the town hall down. We've got a ton of minions and pups. We've got headhunters, two headhunters actually moving in towards that queen. And it's a three star. So again, no balloons left over at the end of it. I would have preferred to have had a load of balloons left over just because it looks kind of cool, doesn't it? When you're finishing the attack with 20 balloons, but we still crushed it. We wiped the base and the only reason we didn't have balloons left at the end is because maybe I was a little bit overzealous with my freezes and maybe, just maybe, the queen didn't make the right decisions on which wall to shoot at. But all in all, that was a crushing three star and I've had a few of those while practicing this in Legends ahead of my Legends series video that's coming up pretty soon. So keep your eye out for that guys, it's going to be pretty epic. And there we have it, my Sui Lolo guide. Now I'm not going to pretend that's not a complex strategy, but if you stick to the basic fundamentals of 
um, looking at where your Sui value is, making sure you're creating pathing, taking out that town hall, and getting your Lolo deployment right. So dropping them in batches, using the hounds to tank for them. You can't go far wrong, guys. You can be walking away with triples just like you saw me getting there. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, guys, please do smash the like button. Also, drop a comment to let me know if you've tried this out and how much success you've had with it. And, of course, if you don't already, please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to be made aware when I go live or when I post new videos in the future. I do one or the other pretty much every single day, so there's always fresh content on the channel. Until next time, much love. Big Veil is out.